Hi, I'm Denchi, and as some of you know, I have my own image board named Denchi Chan at Chan at Denchi Live. You can post stupid stuff to different image boards. There's functionality like a news page and statistics and things like an overboard that updates live. So when people post new posts, they show up here. If you click on a specific post, you can see replies to it live and all these cool things. And I'm going to show you how to set all of this up using a software called JS Chan because that's what I use for all of this on Debian 10. So let's begin by following the JS Chan guide. The first thing you're probably going to want to do is as I talk about in all my web hosting tutorials is for all your different web services and stuff you want to host, make a directory in var www. It's what I recommend what most people do. It's, it's a good idea to do this. So I'm going to make a directory. I'm going to call it test.denshi.live as I've done for the rest of the tutorials, always using that domain name. As you can see, there's nothing in here. You're going to want to clone this repository. So git clone the repository, then a dot. That basically clones it to that directory. However, this does take quite a long time because the git good servers, which is where this is hosted, are a little slow. So you might have to wait a while. I'm just going to copy over a version that I myself have. Okay, so I've copied one over. And as you can see, this is what is in the actual repository. So if we go over here, we have to begin with actually installing on the dependency we need. So we need Linux, obviously we're running Debian 10 over here. We need Node.js, which we'll be installing with NVM or the Node version manager, Mongo database, which I've never actually talked about on this series, Redis, which is essentially just cache software, Nginx, we already talked about that, Certbot, already talked about this in a video. This is stuff for converting images and FFmpeg and that kind of stuff. I'm going to want to install all the stuff that's already in the Debian repository. So this stuff, um, app get install, copy paste this command, add Redis server, it's a good idea to install that too and just wait for that to load. Okay, so now that we've installed Nginx, FFmpeg, Image Magic, and all that image stuff, and Redis, we're going to want to install Mongo Database. Now I have this over on my wiki. It's just a little short article about how to install and configure it because we're gonna have to follow all these steps. It says over here, you want to install Mongo Database and enable authentication, which this article covers. This will be linked in the description as well. So we just got to copy paste. I believe this is duplicated for some reason, but copy paste it down from here, basically just to get the database for Mongo Database. Uh, I believe I already have this installed in my system. So if you copy paste then run that, it'll create a new little repository database in Etsy apt sources list.d. There you go, MongoDB org 4.4 list. And then you just got to do sudo apt update. So it updates all your repositories over there. So there's, there's the Mongo database one. And then we want to install Mongo database. So sudo apt install mongodb org. That installs things like the Mongo shell and the Mongo database. It's quite a big package, might take a while to download. Just gonna give it a second over here. Okay, so we've installed Mongo database. Now we're gonna take a look at how to run that as a service. So like a lot of stuff in web hosting, there's always a daemon for it. So we're gonna do sudo systemctl restart Mongo D or mongod. So I'm gonna call it mongod because that's funny. Now we can customize the daemon itself, but we're gonna take a look at the configuration file because the daemon has a configuration file over at etsymongod.conf. We're gonna want to edit that in a second. But first of all, we want to enable authentication. So basically by default, when you install Mongo database, it has no authentication, just get into it and boom. You want to have users and passwords and stuff. And to enable that, you have to do the following. So first of all, we're gonna want to load up the Mongo shell. So after you've started the Mongo daemon, so just so pseudo system CTL restart, you know, Mongo D, you're going to type just Mongo, you should be able to access the shell. Here we are the Mongo shell. So this little prompt over here, and we're just going to just basically copy paste this following command over here. Well, what this does is it uses the admin database. So that will be our authentication database. That's the one you want to use for all of the stuff in JS Chan, because I don't know why, but by default, JS Chan authenticates everything through the admin database. So we're going to use admin database, we're going to create an admin user. First of all, this isn't specific to JS Chan. This is something we have to do with Mongo database in general. So just copy paste that press enter, I'm going to type it a password I'm going to just do one, two, three, four for that. So my password for my admin user or my user admin is one, two, three, four. As you can see, it already exists. So it gave me an error. But basically, once you do that, it'll be creating that user. Okay, so now what we're going to want to do is edit the mongod.conf file to enable authentication, we're going to exit over here, we're going to sudo vim that file. So Etsy mongod.com, we're going to scroll down to the section that says security over here, we're going to uncomment that and we're going to add a little entry over here that says this authorization enabled. So just copy paste that there. And now we're going to want to reload the daemon. So restart uh, mongod 
just like that. And now authentication is enabled. So if we want to do any changes to the admin database, we need to sign in as admins. So we're going to copy paste this command over here like that. Press enter. I'm going to enter my password, which as I said before, is 1234. Obviously, you don't actually use a password 1234. And as you can see, I am signed in. So now what I'm going to want to do is once again, use the admin database. Now, normally, if you'd be using this for any other Mongo database project, you would want to use a different database like use, I don't know, JS Chan or something. But we're going to use the admin database just like that. And we're going to create a new user. I'm going to call it just copy paste this up to the user section I'm gonna call this guy uh, Chan because it's like a Chan, you know, Den Chi Chan and that kind of stuff and copy paste all of this uh, until the database section. So I'm going to make the database. I'm going to call that database. Um, I'm going to call it Chan as well, just for confusion or actually, no, I'm going to call it Chan dat. Okay, that's a good idea. And just copy paste all of this. And then I'm going to make a password. I'm going to make it one, two, three, four, because that's super scary. We're going to want to create Chan dat. So we're going to want to do uh, use Chan dat like that. And just by using something in Mongo database, you've created it. So there you go. We've created our user and our database and enabled authentication by changing that configuration file and adding the whole authorization enabled part. We've done it. We've finished our Mongo database configuration part. Now comes the fun part. <laughs> After we're done with this, we have to install node. So that's pretty easy. We want to go over here to node version manager, the GitHub page, and just go to install and updating. You can basically just copy paste the install script. So just curl this just like that. Okay, so once you've ran that command, you see it's installed MVM. But what you want to do now is copy paste this section over here. And basically what that does is let you use the MVM command because it adds it to your path variable. So now we can just run MVM. And as you can see, it's an actual command we can use. So back to JS Chan, that was just copy paste and something and copy paste another thing. It's quite easy installation for a software. We want to do NVM install dash dash LTS and NVM use dash dash LTS. So this will install the LTS version of uh, node, I believe it's 14 point something and then use it. So enable it. So this is already done uh, on my system. I'm just going to do it again for the sake of checking it. And as you can see, yeah, it's version 14.16.0. Anyway, so once you run that and you've probably installed Node.js, that's pretty much it in terms of what you want to actually install. Now we're going to move on to the configurations. Remember when we cloned this entire repository, it's because there are some very important configurations in here. I talked about Nginx in my Nginx video, but basically you want to copy paste um, nginx.example from configs Nginx in the repository. I'm going to call it test.denshi.live because as you can see, we're copy pasting it to Etsy Nginx that's available test.denshi.live, um, just like that. And then we're going to link that over. So sudo ln dash s um, Etsy Nginx sites available test that entry live we're going to link that to etsy nginx sites enabled test dot denshi dot live just like that okay so now that that's done you can either edit it with your editor so like sudo vim etsy nginx sites available test that entry live if you go through this you'll notice something there's a lot of lines like www.domain.com and stuff that you got to change but i'm not going to go through this and manually change all of that so here's a little bit of a genius little unix tip for anyone who has any basic understanding of Unix, you can use said to replace strings in text. So let's say look at all these, it says path to JS Chan, we got to change that to the path where we put JS Chan. And to do that, we can use said. So here's some pre built commands over here, just copy paste this and change a few things. So instead of domain.com, we're using test that and live and Etsy engine X that's available. And instead of path your install, our install is in var www test dot denshi dot live. And then we want to do the exact same thing, but for our domain. So copy paste this, change your test on shit live, and then change your domain dot com to whatever domain you're using. In my case, test dot denshi dot live. Just like that. Okay, so and then it says you might want to go and check nginx.conf by default on Debian, that stuff's configured well, so we don't have to check that. You want to use certbot. So um, if you don't already have certbot from my nginx video, then install it with sudo apt install Python 3 dash certbot. So it's already installed to generate a certificate. You want to do sudo certbot cert only dash dash standalone dash D for your domain, which is test.denshi.live. I'm not going to run that because I already have the certificate for my domain and I need to generate another one. I don't want to ruin their servers. I want to randomly spam the let's encrypt servers. The rest of this guide is how to set up um, the GOIP data. It's a little bit complicated. I'm not going to follow this in this guide, but if you want users to have a flag based off the country they're posting from, you can set this up. Anyway, you want to go to real favicon generator if you want your own custom favicon for something, uh, it basically generates an entire folder full of different 
favic cons for stuff. So in my case, I'd select, I don't know, here's a nice picture of Luke Smith that someone posted to Denshi Chan. And this will basically turn that, yeah, it's too big, but basically it would turn that into a bunch of stuff. I'm not going to do that here, but once you've gotten all that stuff, you want to put those in a directory called Gulp, uh, I think it's res and then icons. Yeah, that kind of thing. Anyway, now let's move on to the fun part where we do all the configuration. So once you've cloned the repository, as we've done before, you want to copy the configuration file, the base secrets.js, bit of a weird name, to configs secret.js, and then we're going to edit it with our editor. So we'll just copy paste that command and then use vim to edit a file called configs secrets. Dot J S just like that. So I'll bring you up into here. And now we're gonna want to change our username to the username we chose before when we created our Mongo database user. So remember we called that guy Chan or not Chad Chan. And the password for Chan was one two three four. And the database that Chan used was Chan Dap. That's all we really have to choose. If you're configuring Redis in a weird way, you might want to configure stuff here. If you want to change the backend web server port, then sure, change it. You might want to randomly generate uh, text here for cookies and trip code secrets and, and stuff. There are some keys for CAPTCHA. If you enable these, then you'll be able to use CAPTCHA for Google ReCAPTCHA and HCAPTCHA. I'm going to write and quit with colon right quit. And now we're going to just copy paste these two commands. What these do is copy two pug configurations, so buildable HTML files for a page called fac and a page called rules. So these are just two little pages that can show up at the bottom of your image board, just as little demos of what you can create with pug. So you could make like your own custom pages on the image board and put them in custom pages. This is just an example. Anyway, now for the big boy part, installing all the NPM stuff. I'm just gonna chain this as one big command. I'm gonna do NPM install and and NPM run script setup and and gulp reset just like that so this will install dependencies run the setup script and gulp reset resets the database stuff and resets all the pages and html stuff so this basically sets up our image board for the first try. Okay, so now that we've successfully run those commands, we can move on to the next step, which is using Process Manager 2. Now, PM2 is built in, I believe, with Node.js 14. It's a process manager for Node.js stuff. And if you run start up, it basically starts up your little image board, just like that. And if you run PM2 save, it saves the configuration. And when you ran PM2 startup, pay attention to this little part where you can copy paste uh, this section over here that basically lets you automatically have a little daemon. So if you copy paste this part over here and run it in your terminal, you'll basically get a little daemon that can activate stuff called PM2, then your username. So in my case, it's PM2 Alex. Anyway, so once you've run that, you can move on to the next part, which is running npm run script start which starts the entire proper image board and then finally we run gulp which generates all the basic pages and now if we go to test dot denshi dot live just like that you'll see that there's an image board here you'll notice that the message over here says you want to edit this file so just copy paste that you're going to want to do vim views page home dot pug we're just going to go over here and delete this line right quit and then uh, run a nice pm2 reload all which reloads all processes and gulp html which reloads all html web pages so just let that run and then reload over here and as you can see the page is blank because it doesn't find anything to display we haven't made any boards yet but you have your basic image board set up now the first thing to do is to sign into your admin account you're probably wondering well what is my admin password i have the auto login over here that's that is actually incorrect this is from the last time when i tested this to get your password you want to run gulp password and this will generate a little password over here which you can copy paste and the username itself is already there. Copy paste this to here and your username is admin by default. I'm not gonna save it. And over here, you can do a bunch of stuff to manage your uh, little image board. You can create a board. Uh, so I'm gonna call this one, let's say A. There's caps because these ones are built into the actual software. I'm gonna do VMS3QC. These are always a little hard to do. I'm gonna create an image board and call A. Maybe just, how about G? I'm going to call it technology because G is the technology board description. Wow. An image board like that. And you can have tags. 
If you click submit, and there you go. As long as everything's correct, you've created an image board. And if you go to your home, you see it's not there yet. You have to run that PM2 uh, command again to reload all HTML pages. So just give that a second while it reloads this page, rebuilds it. So basically, every time you publish news or create a new image board, you want to run that PM2 reload all and gulp HTML command. Because once you do that, reload your page, there you go. You got your technology image board over here, and you're over all stats. So you can also do other things with your account. You can do news, you can do bad every single uh, image board itself you can click on it and you can get an admin view on it so you can go to your account and then go to G and just click mod index or mod catalog or recent and custom pages and stuff you can have custom pages you can add banners to all your pages you can change this banner specifically by changing a file you can do a lot of nice stuff in this so yeah I've been Denshi this has been how to self host your own image board with JS Chan I hope you enjoyed goodbye <music>